Well, hello again, and today we're going to do another look at not a new lens, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, depending on how you see it. Uh, but we're going to take a look instead on another photography book. Uh, this is not a how-to book like stunning digital photography. This is more a coffee table book that is already done uh, with one, one photographer that you might not really expect to be a photographer. Uh, this guy is someone I have uh, admired more or less all of my life. Uh, not just because of his photography, but because of his musicianship, uh, without really knowing it. Uh, let's just make, I am a, I was born in 89, so I call myself the wall generation, and anybody out there who's interested in history might know what I mean when I say I'm born in 1989 and I feel like I am the wall generation. Now that if it is in Deutsch, as you wish to bring an idea why I'm in the Mühl generation. Yeah, but, but anyway, the guy I am uh, talking about is Andy Summers and uh, for you who are interested in music out there, he is the guitar player in a little-known band called The Police, a three-piece group containing of Andy Summers, as stated before, on guitar, uh, a guy known as Stuart Copeland, who is also a film director on drums, and a little unknown uh, English uh, singer uh, known, for, uh, I think he is from Newcastle, and his name is Gordon Sumners. And uh, he, his artist name is Sting. So it's basically Andy Summers, Stuart Copeland, and Sting. They were the police. So here's the book. This is quite the beast. It's a coffee table book, and it contains, as it says on the front, 1980 to 1983. It's uh, all of Andy Summers' uh, photography work when he was on the road with the police. And if you're any interested in music and in musical photography, if I would might put it in that way, I would say this book is a really interesting uh, thing to look into. You know, it's uh, really interesting to see how a rock musician also interested in photography could mix his two hobbies or rather his work and his hobby in such a interesting way I mean, this book is uh, quite precise uh, well it's a good hefty piece of uh, paper and uh, I would really recommend it because it's such a interesting really interesting book to flip through to get inspiration and uh, this is a little bit during the time where they went from being a small town band to worldwide celebrities and the you can actually see the contrasts between the uh, three members of the group I mean, Miami Beach 10th of December 1980 yeah, this is a really great interesting historical document about one of my at least favorite music groups of all time and I had the distinct privilege of seeing them when they uh, a couple of years ago they made a reunion tour and I had the grand you know the grand opportunity to watch them live at uh, Ericsson Globe in Stockholm and it was probably one of the best concerts I've ever attended thus far in my life so yeah so it's both casual photography and, uh, you know, on stage and also lads being lads. So it's uh, really interesting to see this being done by a rock and roll guitarist. And also, as you might see, or you eagle-eyed viewers, when I'm flipping through here, yes, Andy Summers usually used Nikon. And also they had um, Stuart Copeland, who used to shoot everything they were doing with his Super 8. So they actually had 
two-thirds of the group were photographers, one stills and one moving pictures. So I would really, if you're at least, if you're any interest in photography, I would say this might be a little bit of a specialty item, but I would say it's really worth this was really worth worth the price. This is one of my favorite uh, photos in the entire book because if you read the caption on it, it actually says that it's actually Andy Somers who took this picture. But that might sound a little strange because Andy is right here in the picture. I don't know how good you might see this, but yeah, he, he was right here. It actually says that he managed to hook up a, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, what is it called now again, a remote trigger for his camera with a motor, dri motor drive, so he could actually tri trigger his camera from a button on his pedal board, so he could actually take concert pictures of himself, looking like he was in the pit doing photography while he was actually on stage. And that's a bit, you know, that's a fun fact. So, all in all, this book is something I would really recommend for any police fan and also any type of musical photography fan. It's a great, thick, packed full of interesting, you know, history. Oh, and by the way, for you who are musically interested, this uh, guitar is uh, Andy Summers' special, you know, the Fender Telecaster. It has a, uh, a pre presumed it was a Gibson PAF or PAF uh, pickup in the neck position. And for you who doesn't know out there, PAF stood for Patent Applied For because Gibson didn't have a patent on their pickups. Well, why they were when they were made. So it always said PAF PAF on them, which stood for Patent Applied For. But anyway, it has a pickup here, here. This is the original uh, Telecaster bridge pickup. It had a brass bridge instead of a uh, stainless or a, you know, any type of steel one. It said it had a brass bridge with a small uh, crack down here by the pickup, brass saddles, and uh, it had, I think here and here there are two different switches. This would be an outer face switch, so you change the polarity of the neck pickup, and there was a preamp installed into the guitar, so you have a third control dial here, a potentiometer, which was actually the gain stage of the preamp built into the, to the guitar. So this guitar, Andy apparently bought from a guitar student of his when he was a guitar teacher in Los Angeles way before he was ever in the police. But anyway, this guitar was actually during the reunion tour. He didn't take the original apparently out on tour. Instead, uh, the Fender Custom Shop made a limited number of replicas of Andy's uh, guitar. So if you are guitar collectors out there in the world, there, there are a few of these that are precise details, you know, precisely detailed reproductions of Andy's actual guitar, and that's quite interesting to know. Yeah, but anyway, as I've said before, this book is a real gem when it comes to, you know, a great musical trio's uh, exploits during three years of their careers and how it changed them. I would say it's a really fun both read and look through to get you know some really interesting you know uh, some you know yeah this is a fun one as well <clears throat> yeah, it's very interesting so would I recommend this book yes I would really recommend it you can see the price I paid for it on the back now it's in euros but anyway I'll be watching you Inside the Police 1980-83 by Andy Summers. And I would also, excuse me, tea break. I would also recommend uh, watching the movie um, Everyone Stares the Police Inside Out by Stuart Copeland. So
So yeah, this book is a really great read for any police fan and for any fan of uh, live music photography. So yeah, that's all I have to say for now and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.